<coughs> so thank you very much to, to the organizer for inviting me to this uh, workshop and give me a possibility to uh, do this talk. So uh, the talk is, uh, well, this is the title. It's based on a paper that uh, I wrote together with Nicola Ciccoli, Camille Rangangu, and Ping Shu. And uh, wh what is it uh, about? Hello. Let us give some motivation. So in the last, uh, say, 10 years, there was this explosion of interest uh, uh, driven by this uh, derived algebraic geometry in particular it started with this uh, paper by Panther, uh, Turn, uh, Bakir, Vetsus in 2013 about simple shift symplectic uh, structure. And uh, well, to, to people working in area, area um, or um, differential geometry, uh, so coming from Poisson geometry in a, in a very broad sense, it, it was, there were immediately very clear striking uh, uh, similarities with, with uh, structures and construction that we knew very well. But, well, but the tools were really completely different and uh, to me at least uh, very difficult to, to understand. So this kind of similarities for instance were like the case that construction topological quantum field theory or shifted and symplectic uh, and shifted symplectic uh, and Poisson structure in, in, uh, in, graded, uh, in graded geometry and, and maybe other, other examples. So th there were things that look very, very close to what we, we knew, uh, but in a completely different context and uh, with completely different tools. So first, uh, first, uh, uh, need was a need of some dictionary, if possible, or at least, uh, or at least understanding what were the connection between things that uh, from one side look very, very different, and on the other side very, very similar. Uh, okay, some parts of this uh, 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 of this relation were immediately clear. Okay, from uh, from our point of view, I mean, from point of view of Poisson geometry. So, for instance. Uh, uh, well, first of all, differentiable stacks were known to be Lee groupoid. This was spelled out in this paper by Berend and Shu. So th this was uh, something known from the beginning. And even symplectic structure on these uh, ones on these stacks, one symplectic structure on these stacks were known to be uh, quasi symplectic groupoid. I think Shu proved uh, the Morita invariance of this uh, quasi symplectic structure. And so, this is uh, a statement that uh, this uh, geometrical structure lives on, uh, on the differentiable stack. So, the question that I want to discuss uh, in, this, uh, in this talk and what is the equivalent of Poisson? So, if quasi, quasi symplectic structure is, um, is a natural notion uh, of symplectic structure on a differentiable stack, uh, what is the natural notion for a Poisson structure? So, uh, when we start discussing this problem, there was a, a candidate which was a quasi Poisson groupoid, a notion that was introduced uh, 10 years ago by Iglesias Ponte, Laurent Jean-Gu, and Ping Shu. Uh, but no one at that time uh, discussed Morita invariance. Of course, it was a problem that could, could have been discussed immediately because it's very natural problem in Poisson geometry, uh, Mor Morita, Morita invariance is uh, well, uh, well known when study, well studied uh, construction, and, uh, but for some reason uh, no one was interested and no one did take care of the problem. But now with, this, uh, with, this, uh, with the appearance of these notions in, in derived uh, geometry, well, Maybe <laughs> we decided that it was time to 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 discuss it. Yes, yes. In in this in this context, yes. Well, in the sense, uh, yes, of Alexev, of Ping Shu, of uh, Burstein. Uh, and no, no. These are I'm discuss. Uh, um, Quasi Poisson groupoid is what I'm going to discuss. So, uh, 
their, their example is a very basic example of this uh, of this quasi Poisson group. Quasi Poisson, uh, quasi -poisson I think it is, they have. Uh, I don't think they have the the, the, the notion quasi Poisson group for it. Maybe quasi Poisson group. Y yes, yes, but on group. Yeah, yeah. It, in, a, in a sense, yes. In a sense, yes. And definitely, the, the, well, anyway, I will discuss this. Uh, uh, their example, Alexei, Manrik, and, and Malkin, Groupoid is a basic example of the quasi Poisson group. So, I, anyway, I'm going to discuss this. Anyway, this is what we want to discuss, right? If this, the, the notion introduced, uh, introduced in this paper is a notion which is uh, Morita invariant. In the same way, let's say, in the symplectic case, uh, quasi symplectic uh, groupoid is a Morita invariant object. So this is uh, the, what I want to discuss. Of course, uh, in the derived setting, uh, a lot of things have been done. Um, uh, in particular, this, is this paper by Talak, Pantev, Tsun, Batir, Vetsosi, which introduced shifted po uh, Poisson structure in derived, in derived algebraic geometry, and then there, there have been development. Uh, I'm not uh, going to discuss the relation, mainly because I'm not able to do it. Anyway, I suggest to look at this very nice lecture by, given by Pavel Safranov in the Diablerie, and the, you can find on YouTube where he tried to, to put together this, uh, these two words, but I'm not going to discuss it. You sure? No, no, right, but this is a, there is a very clear, uh, well, I, I'm going to discuss a little bit this, but anyway, you have to think as differentiable stack as a, an equivalence class of the groupoid up to Morita equivalence. So you can define Morita, anyway, I'm going to discuss it, but from this point of view, a differentiable stack is a, well, a Lie groupoid is a, is a presentation of the differentiable stack. And, you can have equivalent uh, presentation, which are given by equivalent. Uh, well, this this one. If you want to 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 define a differentiable stuff from this point of view, say equivalence class of the groupoid up to Morita equivalence. Yes, in a, in, a way, in a way you think Lie groupoid as a way of describing the space of leaves. The, so there is an underlying foliation, so there is a space of leaves. You can describe in several ways. Yes, but this is the meaning of differentiable. Otherwise, if you think algebraic stack, then it's a different thing. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I, I will say a couple of words about this. So first, first of all, let me say what is uh, Morita equivalence. So first of all, I have to define what is Morita morphism. So think that you have two Lie groupoids, Z and gamma, over two different space of units. X and M, and the Lie groupoid morphism, okay? So you have a morphism 
phi between R rows and more, a morphism small phi between uh, units. And then you say that this morphism is a Morita morphism if the small phi is a subjective submersion and the, the big phi satisfies uh, well, this condition that in any way means simply that Z is isomorphic to the pullback group poise. Okay? You can define out of this small phi a pullback group poise, okay, which is a group poise over X, gamma is over M, right? Uh, gamma of X is over X, and this is a group poise in a very natural way. And this is the pullback group poise. So the fact that this is a Morita morphism means that this group point Z is uh, isomorphic to the pullback group point. And then uh, this is Morita morphism. Then you can define Morita equivalence uh, between two group points, gamma one and gamma two, over in principle two different uh, sets of units, M1 and M2. And uh, you say that they are Morita equivalent if there exists a third group point Z with two Morita morphism, one toward gamma one and one toward gamma two. Uh, well, so with two Morita morphism against the two group points. Okay, you can prove that this is an equivalence relation. You can prove a lot of properties. So uh, for us, a, a differentiable stack is just the equivalence class of the group point uh, under this, uh, this equivalence relation. And we typically denote like this, right? So M over gamma, just to, to say that this is a way to, to, to encode information of the space uh, of the space of leaves. So what is the general philosophy if you look at the problem from this point of view? If, if you want to describe some geometrical structure, synthetic structure, Poisson structure, what are the vector fields, vector bundle, and so on, okay? You define on, on, a, on a particular Lie group point, and then you want to prove that you can transport this, to the, to this geometrical structure to the whole class uh, of uh, uh, Morita equivalent uh, Lie group point, okay? So this is what we are trying to do, to, to, to prove that certain geometrical structure are invariant under the Morita equivalence. So let us discuss briefly this, ca this symplectic case, okay? Uh, where things, uh, if you want, uh, are quite easy. So first of all, definition. So we define a geometrical structure, uh, 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 what we call quasi-symplectic uh, structure. So quasi-symplectic groupoid is a, a Lie groupoid gamma over M together with this data. A two form omega, a, a two form omega on the arrows and a, a three form H on the units, okay? And they have to satisfy these properties. First of all, closure, because symplectic structure are closed. And what, so omega is not closed on the nose, it's not a D omega zero, but it's closed up to something. And this something you have to think is something that comes from down, from the space of units, because uh, H is a three form on the units and delta star is what, what is it? Is the co-boundary um, uh, defined by the groupoid structure, no? You, you know that every groupoid has a cohomology and this cohomology is compu computed on a complex where in degree zero, is, uh, they are a function of the unit, in degree one, they are function over the arrows and, the, and, 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 and so on. And, and then there is a co-boundary, which I denote with delta star. So delta star, uh, H is a form on three on, uh, on uh, M, delta star of H is a three form on, uh, on, the, on the arrows. And uh, this omega must be multiplicative, which can express again by saying that delta star, the same co-boundary is omega, H zero. And uh, the three form H must be closed uh, on the nose, the H is equal to zero. So this is, this condition is the condition that replaces the condition of, of the symplectic form to be closed. So this is, well, we say that it, it is closed up to homotopy by saying this. And then there is a condition uh, that replaces the non-degeneracy. Symplectic form must be uh, non-degenerate. Again, this, the omega, the two form is not uh, non-degenerate uh, everywhere, but uh, it, it satisfies a, a weaker notion of degeneracy, which is this one. So you take the kernel of omega, which 
uh, if it would be a true synthetic structure would be zero everywhere. But here uh, we don't demand this, we demand that the kernel of omega intersection with kernel of source and kernel of target, as S and T are the source and target map of the groupoid, and not everywhere, but only on the space, uh, on, on the space of uh, units is zero. Okay, so this is a weaker notion uh, of, uh, of uh, non-degeneracy. Of course, a poor simplicity structure Alexei's invention, I, I, it's, uh, I think it comes as an example of this. Uh, uh, I think, uh, to, be, to be sincere, I don't remember if he, I don't think he gives uh, the, uh, the full definition. I think uh, for sure he gives the basic example. I think that uh, he, he, well, to be, I have to check uh, because I don't know really the answer, but uh, for sure he discussed groups in this, in this case, for instance, this, uh, this condition uh, is trivially satisfied, and um, well, I have to check because uh, because I don't know. Anyway, this this definition, as it is, was introduced more or less at the same time by Ping Shu and by Boost in uh, Kranich, Bainstein, and Zhu in uh, 2004. In any any in any case, um, well, let me say. Uh, there is, of course, a simplectic poor simplectic structures when h is zero and kernel of omega is zero everywhere, right? In that case, it, was, it is a, a symplectic groupoid, okay? Anyway, this more general notion is the right one to, uh, to is, is the one that uh, satisfies the, the, the property of being Morita equivalent. And uh, well, in, in a sense, it's, 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 it is easy to, to see uh, so suppose that you have uh, some Morita morphism okay, from gamma X to gamma, this is the Morita morphism, phi is a surjective submersion. Then of course, uh, since the data of the quasi symplectic groupoid are forms, you can do the pullback. And so you can put back uh, with big phi omega with small phi H. Of course, uh, the properties, uh, the closure properties are still satisfied. What you have to prove that uh, this pullback uh, still satisfies the, the non-degenerative condition. This is the, part, the this is the case. So this means what? Means that if you have a, a quasi symplectic groupoid on gamma, you can transport it with the Morita morphism to gamma of X, uh, and then you can transport it to in, in the whole class uh, of uh, of Morita equivalent. Uh, Morita equivalent uh, Poisson um, simple, uh, regroupoids, okay? So this is an example of what uh, I meant before. You have a sun geometrical structure which is defined on a single degroupoid and then you prove that you can transport it by Morita variance. Okay. For, for this, uh, yes, this is a Morita morphism, which, it's, it, it, which means uh, this, right? So it's a Ligroupoid morphism. Okay, that at the end means that uh, the groupoid Z is uh, isomorphic to the to the pullback groupoid, right? Yes. That's all, yeah. Okay, so what we want to do is to prove the same for the Poisson case, okay? And then, uh, first of all, what is the Poisson case, okay? So the, I introduced the notion first and then discuss the properties. So this is the definition of quasi-Poisson groupoid. So what is the quasi-Poisson groupoid? Quasi-Poisson groupoid is a Lie groupoid gamma over M, Phi is a, is a bivector field on, uh, on the space of arrows. And lambda is something down, which is a, a section in uh, wedge three of the algebraoid. Okay? It, I denote with A the Lie algebraoid of gamma. And uh, so you see it's, it's very parallel to the, to the case of, uh, of uh, the symplectic because this uh, I should be should be the Poisson. Um, I, 
sorry, I forgot to, to write that phi must be multiplicative. So not, not any by vector, but a multiplicative by vector. I, I don't give the definition now, I will give it uh, in a moment, right? But so there is an additional condition that I didn't write here, pi must be a multiplicative by vector, okay? And again, uh, in order to be a, a Poisson structure must be scoten bracket of pi with, with itself zero, here it's not zero, it's not zero up to something coming from down, and this something is lambda, which is parallel to H in this implicit case. But this lambda is a section of the algebraoid, okay? These two errors, uh, uh, exactly, every, as in the group, in the groupoid, every, every section of the algebraoid can be, uh, defines a left invariant vector field and right invariant vector field. And then this is uh, the, the combination of left minus right. No, but it's uh, symmetric because uh, uh, pi, in, as a consequence uh, of this, pi lambda left is equal to pi lambda right, so this is, it's, uh, it's symmetric. Okay, and this is, there is also very important notion of twist between, between two, two quasi-Poisson structure. So we have two quasi-Poisson structure, pi, pi one lambda one, pi two lambda two over the same group point gamma. And we say that they are twist equivalent if there exists some T, which is a section lambda of lambda two of A, so section now of degree two of the algebraoid, such that uh, pi two and lambda two are related to pi one lambda one by this, by this equation. So pi, pi two is equal to pi one plus the combination uh, left minus right of T, and lambda two is, a, is this expression here, where this T, T, is the bracket, the scotten bracket of the algebraoid. And uh, this delta phi one of t, well, I'm not giving the definition, but uh, uh, it's a differential, well, it's not, a well, it's a derivation that the pi uh, being multiplicative uh, defines uh, on, the, on the algebraoid. So it's a, it's a derivation of the wedge product and of the scotten bracket of the algebraoid. Uh, which, is automatic, which is automatically defined by, by the fact that pi is multiplicative and the fact that uh, pi pi is not zero tells that this derivation doesn't square to zero, okay? This is a derivation of the wedge product under the Scotten bracket, but which square to the bracket with lambda. Maybe I should have added this. Uh, it's a bialgebraoid. Yes, this is not uh, exactly this. this. Let's say if it's square to zero, this is uh, exactly when lambda is zero, because the general relation is. Uh, okay, so this is what the f if if it is lambda is zero, this is a derivation of the of the algebraoid, so it defines a, a bialgebraoid. Here it's a weaker, in the infinitesimal structure that you have is a weaker uh, um, structure which is called quasi bialgebraoid okay? Because you have this second derivation which does not, so, does not square to zero but the, the square is controlled by this lambda. So the, the infinite, yes, if you want, well maybe this also should be mentioned, the infinitesimal version of these are Dirac structures, okay? Twisted Dirac structure by H infinitesimal version of these are uh, quasi algebraoid okay. Uh, okay. So there are many examples. So if you take lambda equal zero, this, this definition is Poisson groupoid. Uh, on the infinitesimal version, we have bialgebraoid. Uh, for instance, for solving groups, symplectic group, or whatever. Then if you, we, we want to quasi example, one notion is quasi for some group, where you, you, on the group, you switch on lambda. Uh, and one example, where, which is, uh, which is a, a group point, uh, which is a group point where everything is switched on, is this uh, AMM group point. Uh, 
which is a very interesting example because uh, it's an example where everything is switched on. And uh, mm, so it's the groupoid is the action groupoid. You need a, a quadratic Lie algebra. Lambda is the three, a Cartan three form. And then there is a, a, a Poisson structure that uh, I didn't write because it was, you know, I don't need it. But there is a Poisson structure that you can find here. And this is, well, not just an example of, of uh, this quasi Poisson structure, but it's also a, a, an example which is um, non degenerate. I think I don't have time to discuss it, but it's interesting because there is also a quasi symplectic structure on this same groupoid, which is uh, the inverse of this uh, AMM groupoid in, a, in, the, in the right sense, up to a mod. So, in any, way, in any case, this is a very interesting example of this. So we want to study, uh, our, our goal is to study Morita invariance of this, uh, this quasi-Poisson structure. So how we can discuss, we, so the, the basic uh, building block is that you have a, a quasi-Poisson structure on gamma, and you want to, you have a Morita morphism, and you want to, to, to transport it uh, on, the, on the pullback groupoid, okay? Um, so in the, in the symplectic case, it was obvious because it, the data were formed, so do the pullback, uh, and that's fine. Here, the data are not formed, are not vector fields, so you cannot, uh, you cannot do the pullback. But you can do something, right? So there is a first naive attempt, which is this one. You choose a connection. You can do it by choosing a connection, right? So you choose a connection, so phi, I, it's, uh, it's not written here, but it's, uh, it's the map uh, between X and M, which stays on the, it's a subjective submersion, the map that stays on the, on the basis. You choose a connection on phi, so you map that goes, goes from a linear map from phi star of TM to TX, which is the uh, right uh, inverse uh, of, uh, of, the, um, of the tangent phi, okay? And, uh, yeah, yeah, this is a normal connection. You can see a, a, a connection. Eh? Of, well, it's, a, it's a connection, yes. So, of, uh, so it's a splitting of Tx in horizontal uh, and, uh, and vertical, if you want. Uh, horizontal, is the, horizontal is the kernel of a tangent, uh, and, uh, and the vertical is this uh, image of this. Okay, So it's a normal connection, but uh, it's useful to, to denote it like this. And uh, so this connection TM fixes well, something that I call again connection on this bundle, right? And this is very obvious. It, it fixes on the algebraoid and uh, on the tangent of the groupoid. Uh, this is uh, obvious because. Um, oh, sorry. A is the Lie algebraoid of G. A uh, sorry, of G, of gamma, sorry, sorry, <laughs> A of X, A li, A li of gamma X, okay? And the, the main point is that A of X, you can write it like T X time A, A over TM, okay? And, uh, and so when you, you, when you have uh, a way to send T X uh, to TM, you can send, you can take couple V, a into you, you do this uh, um, lambda v um, oh sorry <laughs> to do the opposite you, you have to send this you have to do rho of a then lambda v and then uh, um, and that and then that right what do I have to do? I'm sorry, I'm confused. Send this to A. Let me send this to A. Sorry, I have to do the opposite. <laughs> okay, you, you, you do this, right? You do this to uh, lambda rho of A, A, okay? 
and, uh, and the same for T gamma, okay? So you, you, a connection, a connection uh, here fixes a connection here and here, okay? Harrisman connection, yes. But you see, you, you, ha you have map, bundle map from AX to A and you, and you, and you decompose it again in horizontal uh, and, uh, and vertical. So the, the statement is that an Erisman connection here fixes an Erisman connection on this, uh, on this, uh, with respect to this, uh, you, 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 yes. This is A of X that you see as a bundle over X. Of course, it has a bundle map to A over, uh, over phi, okay? And so you, you switch the, the so you switch, you decompose this bundle as a vertical plus uh, horizontal, so it's an Erisman connection. And it's the same for, for the tangent uh, of gamma X. that you write something like T, Tx, I guess, T gamma Tx over Tm. Okay, so this, of course, has a projection to T gamma, and then with the, with the Harrisman connection from Tm to Tx, you do, you do the, you do this, you do the decomposition. So it's an Harrisman connection. Okay, so with this data, so the, the point is simply that you, you have to fix, you have to fix uh, a, a, this Erisman connection with respect to the, to the energetic submersion, and then you can do something very trivial. You take pi, which is a bivector, you use this, and you apply the connection, you get a bivector over gamma of x. You do, you take lambda, which is a section of the algebraoid, you say, you apply lambda delta, you, 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 you get uh, a lambda x, which is uh, a, a section over the algebraoid of x, and then you have the data, but of course this is too naive, right? So pi pi is not lambda, lambda minus lambda, okay? There is something missing. It's very naive, but it turns out, it turns out that, uh, well, the, the right, uh, the right uh, um, structure is, is uh, we, we simply have to add something to this description. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in order to to add this, to see what we have to add, we have to develop uh, a little bit uh, more the structure, and the and the, the claim is that uh, the result follows from from more general result, which is Morita invariant of uh, a, a canonical Thule algebra that we can associate to Thule group void, okay? And this Thule algebra must be thought as uh, the, the algebra of polyvector fields on the Lie group void, okay? The right notion of polyvector fields. No, no, it's finite dimensional. This is, uh, no, well, as an algebra is infinite dimensional. Is the, is the well, I, I will explain, no, it's infinite dimensional, of course. So the algebra of, uh, let's say, the analogous of uh, algebra of polyvector fields. Okay, so I have to, to, to deviate a little bit, but I will come back, it will be immediately clear why. So let me introduce this notion of graded, zeta graded uh, Thule algebra. So it's a very standard notion of Thule algebra, cross strict Thule algebra, cross module. But with the, with the only change that the, the, the Lie algebra involved are graded Lie algebra. Okay? Sorry? Yes. P and delta are degree zero, yes. And uh, so let me just summarize the, the definition. And uh, you see, well, for those who know, it's, uh, the same, it's exactly the same uh, definition of two Lie algebras, but the, with only remark that the Lie algebra are graded Lie algebra. So we have two graded Lie algebras, U and G, a two graded Lie algebra morphisms, one which I call D that goes from U to G, one that I call delta that goes from G to the graded Lie algebra derivation of U. It's a cross, mo it's a, it's a cross model, yes. Yeah. 
No, 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 just a G1, G2, or H, just a, just a greater Lie algebra. And uh, they have to satisfy these two, these two conditions. Uh, so you see, you take pi in G, A in U, B A is again in G, pi D A is the bracket in G, and on the right-hand side you take A, well, first of all you take pi, delta of pi is, a, is delta applied to pi here, is the derivation in U, delta of pi, pi is a, just a generic element of G, okay? No, just, I'm, so far it's an abstract definition, then uh, in a moment, uh, no, 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 for every, for every, for every, this is a condition that must be true for every AB and for every pi. For, from what? Well, it, the notation is not by chance, a pi will be, will be, yeah. yeah, you have to think that this will be, in the, in the next slide will be, this will be, will be a polyvector field and this will be an algebraic uh, section, okay? So, okay, so this is coming, okay? I, I use the notation, uh, the same notation, not by chance. Uh, the only notation which is, I think, is confusing and it's wrongly confusing that I use delta with this, and uh, it's not the delta that I used before, I think. I think it's maybe a bad notation, but the other one uh, has the uh, Okay, so there are these two conditions, and uh, so you take A in U, pi in G, delta pi of A is a new D, as for goes to G, so this is the inequality given in G, and this is uh, the same, right? Something that express the bracket on uh, U in this way. Okay, so it's again, it's, a, it's like a cross model, but uh, the two algebra have, a, have their degree. So there, are, there is an associated di di um, differential graded Lie algebra, which is uh, U shifted by one plus G, with this, uh, uh, with this bracket and with this differential. So this is the bracket, so the bracket pi one, pi two, and then, and then you use uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the, um, this derivation, okay? And, uh, well, no, I was wrong. Even the, <laughs> the, the no, this notation is right, so it's the same, the same derivation I was using before, okay, so anyway. And then this is the differential. So the differential uses uh, this, uh, this uh, graded Lie algebra morphism. But then it, now it's degree one because uh, A is, uh, there is the, is shifted by one, okay? Um, I, guess, I guess so. Um, Yes, in this case it's not true because uh, as a DGLA algebra, there is not concentrated in two degrees because U and G have the degree, well, right? Yeah. So there, there is double, the, you have. Yes, so there are two degrees, right? Yes. Okay, so we, we can look to more Cartan elements than due to this, uh, let's say, internal grading. Uh, the more Cartan equation uh, becomes two equations, 
uh, of course, first of all, we look at elements in degree two, which are direct sum of u in degree one plus g in degree two. And so lambda will be in degree one, g will be in degree two. And so moderate Cartan equations uh, decompose into equation. This is the first one, and this is the second one, okay? Uh, so it's very similar to the equation that defined uh, the quasi Poisson group point. So this is explain why we, we are going. Yes, lambda is the degree one, but here you see it at the, at the at degree two, right? Lambda, well, lambda is, you see, an, an element uh, of nit nu two is lambda plus pi, okay? Where lambda is one, degree one in the degree of u, okay? Ah, but u is shift degree. U is shift, shift degree. When you apply d lambda, the lambda goes here, right? So it, it is, uh, it is uh, in degree three, right? Okay? And, uh, and then, uh, well, this is the equation. Okay, and, the, and the, so you have two, these two equations which is uh, defined in the matter of a Cartan equation. Another, another uh, uh, condition which is, well, another um, part of the typical uh, structure is the gauge transformation over motor Cartan uh, uh, elements, which are given by element in degree zero of the algebra, okay? But here the grid zero again has this decomposition in U and G, and we want to consider only gauge transformation that comes from U, okay? So if, if I consider a gauge transformation of this particular type, which comes from U, then you can compute very easily what is the, the transformation, and you get this, okay? So pi goes in pi plus dp, and lambda goes in this expression, okay? And this... Yes, exponential t is a formal. You can define formally for uh, for every every element in uh, in uh, new zero. Of course, in general, it's a formal. If you if you put these elements, these are vector fields. Well, if you think that this, in our example, the, the, this will be vector fields, okay? In this section of the algebraic. So if you put this transformation here, you will have an infinite series, and then it becomes in general only formal. But if you take only only elements here, then this a e to the t gives only rise to fi a finite number of, of terms, so it's not formal, it's a well-defined de well um, transformation. And uh, if you go back, well, we will go back in, in a moment. These are exactly the data, the data of the, of the twist, uh, of twist. We need password, I think. Yes. Yes, there are several differential. One which is small d is the differential which appears in the Thule algebra. Okay, then, then this capital D, which is the differential in the graded Lie algebra. In moral Cartan, of course, is defined by, by the moral Cartan, by, by this big D. So in, in general, moral Cartan will be D of the couple lambda pi plus the bracket between uh, lambda pi with itself. But then you have to put all the definition inside, and then you, you, you discover that uh, this, uh, equation splits into equation by degree consideration where the small d appears. Yes, uh, to, to switch, yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so. The point is how we do define this Thule algebra for a Lie group point, okay? And so here is where it comes the notion of multiplicative uh, polyvector fields, okay? 
and, uh, and uh, so the, the one that appeared already in the definition of quasi, of quasi Poisson group fold. So what is a multiplicative pulley vector field? There are several ways to, to introduce them. And uh, here there is one which is very, very short and I think very nice, which is this one. So you have to do this. Uh, you know that uh, if gamma is a Lie groupoid, cotangent of gamma is again a Lie groupoid. Okay, it, it is a Lie groupoid over A star, space of units is the dual of the algebraoid. But this is more than a Lie groupoid, it's a VB groupoid, means that all the, all the uh, structure maps are vector bundle morphisms. And if it is a VB groupoid, you can even give the graded version. So the, you can take uh, uh, P star one of gamma, so you put, uh, you give a odd degree to the, to the variable on the fiber, and all the structure maps are, of course, uh, respect the, 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 the degree, okay? So P star one of gamma over A star one of one, A, A star of one is a graded groupoid, okay? So the graded manifold P star of gamma, P star one of gamma has uh, the structure of, uh, of uh, groupoid, uh, of a graded groupoid, okay? But, well, you can apply the standard construction of the groupoid, in particular you can discuss cohomology, okay? And say so cohomology, as we were saying before, is computed on a complex where the, the first uh, space uh, is the space of function over the unity, and the, 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 the space in degree one is space of function over the arrows, okay? But here, space of function of the graded manifold uh, of, a, of a graded vector bundle are just section of the dual, okay? So you, uh, so deg uh, in degree one, there should be section of what? Of T gamma, which has polyvector fields. So polyvector fields in this formal are interpreted as, as a function over the space of arrows of this uh, graded groupoid. And you can take uh, co-cycles, okay? There is the co-boundary operator, you, it applies to, to, to function of the arrow. Here they are a polyvector field. And if they are uh, co-cycles, well, it's a condition polyvector field. So this is the definition of multiplicative uh, polyvector field, okay? And uh, so for instance, uh, just to give example, the issues, uh, you have trivial co-cycles, okay? What are trivial co-cycles? So trivial co-cycles are function of the groupoid that, that uh, uh, comes as the co-boundary operator applied to the, to the, to the function on the, on the basis. But function on the basis are section of the algebraoid, okay? So you, you have delta star is the co-boundary operator and you compute delta star of A is exactly the combination right minus left that we saw appearing several times. So this is a multiplicative polyvector field let's say trivial from the point of view of this interpretation, okay? And uh, in degree one, okay, in degree one, just vector fields of uh, arrows. Vector fields of arrow, you can see like uh, a function of T star gamma. And uh, so V is, is a vector field, is multiplicative if and only if, if V is a group point morphism from T star gamma to R where R is a group, okay? Just R, uh, the additive group. Okay, so V of gamma one, gamma two is V gamma one plus V gamma two. Gamma one, I mean, okay. And um, in degree two, degree two are bivector fields, okay. Bivector field can be seen and as a map from T star gamma, bundle map from T star gamma to T gamma. So pi is multiplicative if and only if this is a groupoid morphism, T star gamma is a groupoid, T gamma is another groupoid, so pi uh, must respect the, the groupoid star structure, okay? And so on, and so on. So this is a, a way to characterize polyvector fields. Okay, um, then what we have? We have, let me call chi multi, uh, tau multiplicative of gamma, the, so far it's just a vector space of, uh, of uh, mm, vector subspace of uh, uh, polyvector fields over gamma, okay? Actually, it is more, it is, uh, this is uh, a graded Lie algebra with a scope and bracket, this is, it happens to be a subalgebra, okay? So, so the, 
uh, I anticipate this result, but this is a subalgebra of the of the uh, of the full algebra of poly vector field uh, with a scope and bracket sigma a. I denote with sigma a the graded Lie algebra of section of the algebraoid. Okay, so the statement is that uh, if you oh, I didn't write so explicitly, so let me add it here that. Uh, we have uh, uh, the, the, the fully algebra is given by okay. so the, this, uh, this proposition which was proved years ago by Iglesias Ponte, Laurent Shangu, and Ping Shu, uh, is exactly the, the proposition that proves all the properties that state that uh, these, uh, these objects define a, 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 a graded fully algebra. Of course, at that time, they didn't formulate like this. They, they proved all these series of properties, but it turns out that they are exactly the one that can be summarized by, by saying that uh, the, um, the, that one is a graded fully algebra. Okay. This one? Yeah, okay. Um, let's say, is infinity of T star one of gamma by, I don't know, by definition of graded manifold is the, is the section of the dual bundle. Okay, so I, ident I denote this with this. And then, in, uh, well, um, co co-cycle of this groupoid is a subset of function, okay? Because uh, uh, co-cycle in degree one of the groupoid homology are just function of the, the arrow that are uh, multiplicative, okay? So this is, uh, I, I want to, well, to outline this, uh, to emphasize this, uh, this fact that this is, uh, from this, from this uh, embedding is co-cycle and from this equality, they are vector fields, okay? So the, the only thing that is uh, what they have to, to say is that the differential D, this D here defined in the fully algebra is exactly uh, the, the co-boundary differential, okay? So it's the, the differential that are associated to every section of the algebraoid that is a combination of right and left, okay? So this property here are exactly the property that I listed before for, uh, for, um, uh, for defining a graded to, to the algebra, okay? And uh, so, uh, okay, corollary, I can go and check what is the Maurer Cartan, and if you go back to the equation and substitute this, you see exactly that quasi Poisson is a Maurer Cartan element of this uh, Maurer Cartan, and the gauge transformation uh, is, uh, is a twist. Okay? So, what we, what we have is this canonically defined, uh, uh, canonically defined. Uh, uh, graded to Lie algebra associated to every Lie groupoid, whose uh, Maurer Cartan elements are uh, quasi Poisson structure. So, what we want to prove is that this is Morita equivalent. Well, if you have two Lie groupoids which are Morita equivalent, then the, there is, uh, well, even the, the, the uh, the graded Thule algebra are in a sense equivalent, and the, if they are equivalent, the Maurer Cartan uh, set are the same, and then uh, uh, you, well, you, you get it as, a, uh, as a result that uh, you can, you have Morit equivalence of the quasi Poisson group point. Okay, so if you want our basic, uh, basic fact, uh, basic theorem, uh, is this one that if you have two Morita equivalent groupoid, gamma one and gamma two, then you have these, these zeta graded Thule algebras, and you prove that they are uh, homotopically equivalent, okay? Which means that you have a, a morphism 
from one, from one to two, the morphisms from two to one, and their composition is homotopic to two, two units. I didn't say what I mean by the morphisms. Maybe I'm, I'm late, so uh, I can uh, I can say something later. But anyway, this is the main pro the main uh, the main result. Okay, we proved that uh, there are these uh, morphisms when they are Morita equivalent. Uh, um, and so this implies that uh, the Maurer Cartan set up to, to, to twist the gauge equivalents of that kind is uh, arisomorphic. And in particular, we can transport the, the quasi Poisson structure uh, over the, the class of. Um, where what would be the opposite direction? What do you mean? What is A? Um, uh, if if the, the, the two Li algebra are uh, equivalent, yeah. then no, this I don't I don't think it's true. No, well I don't know. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I think I do not do not do not. Ex well, I don't know. I don't know what to expect actually. But uh, we don't we don't have any idea about that. Uh, okay, so this is well the main result. Uh, we think, we want to think, again, this homotopy equivalence class of this Thule algebra as the space of all the vector fields on the stacks, on the stack. And, uh, okay, um, most done, I think. Let me just go back to our naive construction. So the, the naive construction was for a Morita equivalent, for a Morita morphism. Uh, so the idea was to choose a connection over phi, and then this defines the connection uh, of the algebraoid uh, and the, on the groupoid. We use this to to go from gamma to to gamma of x, and this well defines actually the first coefficient of the of the Morita morph of the um, of the morphism between between the two Li algebra degraded to the algebra. So what we, we can do now that we have this theorem is to complete with the second coefficient, psi two, uh, which will be, we proved that you can, you can construct this coefficient uh, psi two, which goes from lambda two of uh, um, vector field on gamma to, uh, to the section of the algebra of X. And these two terms, psi one and psi two, are all the, uh, that we need to construct this uh, this morphism, the, this uh, graded Thule algebra morphism, and this is and this appears in the in the transformation of the Morer Cartan element. So this one is the what we were missing, and this theorem is given us in such a way that this is again a, a Morer Cartan element, and. Uh, well, uh, okay, but I can conclude with, uh, with the definition. So I want it a little bit strange that uh, at the end uh, of the project you give a definition, but this is it. And so we can say what is, uh, what is the Morita morphism of quasi Poisson groupoid, okay? So you have two quasi Poisson groupoids, Z and gamma, and you say that you have a, a morphism going from Z to gamma, which is the Morita morphism of this groupoid, but you ask also that there exists some T in sigma one over, over X, so some twist such that you can twist the, 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 the structure over X in such a way that this projects too. Okay? Of course, there is something which is up, it's a polyvector field, this does not project in general down, but you, you want that it projects up, up to some twist, okay? This is the definition that comes natural from the construction. And then uh, the, uh, the Morita equivalence is by saying that there, are two, there is one quasi Poisson structure and two, uh, Morita, two Morita morphs. Okay, uh, that's all, thank you.